Hello, everyone, and welcome back to A Swift Look. I'm Zoe, and today we are going to be ranking Taylor Swift's album closers. We've already ranked her opening songs, we've ranked her track five songs, and so now it is time to rank the closing songs. I am sure we will revisit these rankings, both the track five and the openers, and also the closers once we have the new album out. But I felt like before the new album comes out, I should rank from 10 to 1 the Taylor Swift final song on every single one of her albums. Now, just to clarify, because we know Taylor has put out many different versions of her albums over the years with bonus tracks. Um, she's done the 3 a.m. version of Midnight, all that stuff. I am purely going off of the standard version of the album, the final song on all of the standard versions. So this does not include bonus tracks, 3 a.m. version, anything like that. It is the it is the official album closing song. But before we get into the ranking, let me just run through every single album and what the final song on the album is with a bit of a caveat for her debut album. So her debut album, Taylor Swift, technically the last song is the Teardrops on My Guitar pop version song, which doesn't really seem fair because it's basically a remix. And so I'm going to count as her final song, A Perfectly Good Heart, um, which I guess isn't technically her final song, but we're going to pretend as if it is. For Fearless, the last song is Change, Speak Now, Long Live, Red, Begin Again, 1989, Clean, Reputation, New Year's Day, Lover, Daylight, Folklore, Hoax, Evermore is Evermore, featuring Bonnie Vare, Midnight's Mastermind. So those are the 10 songs that we will be reviewing and again, I say this before every single ranking, but just a reminder that this is a, this is a subjective ranking. This is my own personal opinion. You are entitled to have your own personal opinion. So just because you disagree with me doesn't make the ranking wrong because again, it's music. There is no right or wrong answer, but I would love to know in the comments what your ranking is and what your favorite of her album closers is. So please comment and share all of your thoughts as we go through this. Okay, starting off, with number 10, I have a perfectly good heart from her debut album, Taylor Swift. Listen, this song is fine. It's fine. It's not a great song. This album, I think her debut album is severely underrated. I think there are so many fantastic songs. If you actually go back and look at that track listing, should have said no, Picture to Burn, Our Song, Tim McGraw, Tear Drops on My Guitar, Mary's Song. I mean, there are so many fantastic songs. It's, it's hard to believe that she was 16 when she put out that album. So this is no disrespect to her debut album. It's just that A Perfectly Good Heart is one of the, one of the less good songs on the album, in my opinion. So that's why I have it at number 10. Okay, number nine, I have Hoax from Folklore. This song is fine. Very much like her debut album, Folklore. I love Folklore. It is one of my, it's probably in my top three Taylor Swift albums. I think that song is, or that album is full of incredible songs, songs I absolutely love. I understand why she picked Hoax as the final song on the album. There's good writing, but it just doesn't do anything for me. Honestly, it's at the point when I listen to Folklore, I skip it because I just, there's so many other songs on that record that I want to hear more than I want to hear Hoax. So again, not a bad song. It's just, especially compared to the rest of the album, it's fine. It's, it's okay. Moving on to number eight, we have Change from Fearless. Now, I, re I, I forgot about this, but in doing preparation for this episode, I remembered that this was on the Team USA soundtrack for the 2008 Olympics, and it was used in some like Olympics um, advertisement stuff, which is kind of kind of hilarious. This song is fine. Like it's a fun, I shouldn't even say fun. It's like a rock song, got a good, it has a nice guitar part, part to it, but again, Fearless is such a fantastic album. There's so many great songs on it that this just isn't the one that I turn to or go to when I want to listen to Fearless. It's it's good, but it's not great. So that is why I have it at number eight. 
Moving on to number seven, which may be controversial, I don't know, but I have New Year's Day from reputation. Now, I think a lot of people are going to feel like I didn't, I'm, I'm not giving it the respect it deserves. I know a lot of people love this song. It has never hit for me the way that it has hit for other people. I know that people love this song and have a real strong appreciation for it. I appreciate the song. I appreciate the writing of the song. I, I definitely think it's it should be the final song on the album. Like there's, there's not another song on Reputation that I think maybe call it what you want would have been a good closing song off of Reputation. Like I feel like that could have worked and I love that song. But I, I understand why she picked New Year's Day. I think it has a lot of, um, it's very lovely. It's a very lovely song. I think especially the start of Reputation to the end of Reputation, it's like a nice bookend to the album. But the song itself has just never, has never moved me the way that it has moved other people. And so because of that, I have it at seven. Again, nothing against it. I don't hate it. I like it, but it doesn't move me the way that other songs move me. Number six, we have Evermore featuring Bon Iver. Now I have to admit something. I always thought this song was good. It was, it's a good song. Evermore is not one of my favorite albums. Uh, in fact, I think recently it's become my least favorite of Taylor's albums. And again, I still like it. But in terms of what albums I return to the most often, I would say Evermore is at the bottom of the list, which I know is controversial. But I have to admit, when Taylor performed this song live during the Eras tour as one of her surprise songs, it made me love this song so much much more. I was obsessed. And I'm sure if you're watching this, you've seen the video of her singing this on the piano. Sounds so good. I just, I loved it. I loved it. And so before I would maybe skip over Evermore or I didn't really care that much about it, but now I find it kind of creeping up my ranking because I, how much I love the live her her live rendition of this song. I think it is so beautiful. I think her voice sounds so good on it. Um, and so I have to say like, that's kind of why I have it at number six. And maybe before hearing the live version of the song, this would have been like eight or nine, but I love the live version so much that it's at six. Okay, moving on, we're into the top five now. Number five, Begin Again. Now, Red is my favorite Taylor Swift album. I've made that clear in other past videos. I love that album so much. I think it is just top to bottom excellent. I don't think Begin Again is the best song on the album. Um, obviously, we mean all too well, but I love its positioning in the track listing order. I think it's perfect as the final song on, on the album. I think, again, Red is an album about heartbreak, about loss, about pain and anguish and going through like this devastating time in her life, this real painful breakup. And then to end the album with Begin Again, which is just a song about new beginnings, a song about falling in love again, a song about letting go of your past and moving into something new. I think it's so fitting as that final song. I mean, the lyric, uh, you throw your head back laughing like a like a little kid, I think it's strange that you think it's that you think I'm funny because he never did. I think is such a great line. Um, this idea that I was with this person who didn't appreciate certain parts of me, and now you do. And I have to admit too, like I feel like this song is very relevant to Taylor Swift's life right now um, with Joe and Travis, and like what Joe didn't give her in her relationship and, and, and their time together, Travis now seems to give her, which I think is, I think it's interesting how these songs kind of like were part of her life at one point and then kind of almost come back to her life down the road. But I think it's a really good, strong song. And I think it closes out the album really, really well, which is why it's at five. Okay. Number four, we have Mastermind. Now this song is excellent and features one of my absolute favorite bridges ever. Taylor Swift, we know, is a bridge queen. Queen. She is maybe the best songwriter when it comes to writing a bridge. She just nails it almost every single time. But the bridge in Mastermind, I love so much. This song is obviously about finding someone to fall in love with and kind of, I don't know, like this whole idea of, that, of, of, of like picking someone to fall in love with and like thinking that you're this mastermind who's like getting this person to love you. And then, then at the end, realizing that they, they, 
they knew the whole time and they're in on it too. But it's also a reflection of like Taylor's life in general. And in this bridge, I feel like she sums up who she is and like why she does what she does so incredibly perfectly. So this is the bridge. No one wanted to play with me as a, as a little kid. So I've been scheming like a criminal ever since to make them love me and make it seem effortless. This is the first time I felt the need to confess. And I swear I'm only cryptic and Machiavellian because I care. Tells you everything you need to know about Taylor Swift. She was ignored and picked on as a child. And because of that, she carries these wounds of feeling like she um, doesn't fit in, of uh, feeling like trying to find her place in the world, but to make it seem like it's natural and not contrived. And we know Taylor is the queen of the Easter eggs. She's the queen of dropping little hints here and there um, and saying that, yeah, I might be a, a bit cryptic, but it's because I care and I want people to care about me. Chef's kiss. I think it is a great closing song. I think it gets kind of ignored in some ways because of the fact that she released the 3 a.m. version of the album and she had all these additional songs. And so I think it gets lost that Mastermind is the final song on Midnight's, but I think it is one of her absolute best and I feel like she crushes it. Okay, number three, we have Daylight from Lover. Now, in full transparency, Lover is not one of my favorite albums. I think it has some extremely high highs. It has some low lows. And for me, Daylight is one of the high highs on this album. I love this song. I do have to say though, I don't love the spoken word part at the end of the song. In fact, I often stop. I skip over to, to the next song once she starts talking. I feel like it actually kind of takes away from the song. And I, I almost wish it wasn't a part of it because I feel like it's a lot stronger and makes its point without the talking voice note thing at the end. But I think it is beautiful. The line, I once believed love would be burning red, but it's golden, is like chef's kiss. Obviously a nod to the fact that she has an album called Red. It makes me feel good. I, I love this song so much. Again, it's one of my absolute favorites off of the album. And I think it closes and kind of like shuts the book on the album so perfectly. Love it. Number two. We have Clean from 1989. Again, just another perfect album closer. It's different than the other songs on the album. It's a very unique Taylor Swift song. Obviously, she worked with um worked worked with Imogen Heap on this song, so it has that Imogen Heap sound to it, which I think is really unique and special. Uh, the song is obviously about getting over losing somebody and a heartbreak and realizing like that you've you've moved on from this person and but that but that it hasn't been easy you, you had to take time to like separate yourself from this person in order to like fully move on um i think it's one of her best songs ever i think it's one of her best songs on the album and i think it's a fantastic closing song okay the number one song number one album closer for me is Long Live from Speak Now. This song slaps. I'm sorry, I don't care what anyone else says. If you don't like the song, I'm sorry, because this song is so good. I love that it is a song dedicated to her fans. I It makes me emotional to hear it. When she performed it live, I was there in Kansas City when she performed it live for the first time um, on, on the tour. Well, actually, I was there the second night she performed it, but still, the first city. She performed it on the tour. It makes me em emotional. I think it's just, I think it's a beautiful song. It's like the guitar and like the sort of rock anthem part of it is so perfect. The writing is so fantastic. I think it is one of her best songs again, ever. And I love, I think we we see with with these album closers that sometimes she, she goes for like a quieter, more intimate closer. And then sometimes she kind of goes for like a more powerful ending. And I feel like this is obviously a very powerful ending and it really packs a punch. Um, and I think it is, I think it is sensational. And I think Taylor Swift feels that. Like I, I, I have to imagine when she sings this song live, she really feels its impact and how much people love this song because it really is, it really is one of the best. So there you have it. Those are my, that is my ranking of the, um, Taylor Swift album closers. Again, let me know in the comments, your thoughts, what, what would you have as your favorite album closer, your least favorite, share all your thoughts in the comments section. Please make sure to subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.